Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I want to tell you about the best show that you're not watching. It combines everything that I like in media into one package. It's got horror, it's got extreme challenges, it's got avant-garde art, plenty of trash talking and comedic moments as well. This is the guiltiest of all my guiltiest pleasures, a niche in a niche. And if you're the type of viewer that is offended by She-Hulk or lesbians and Disney stuff, now's a good time to leave because the show that we're about to talk about, I'm pretty sure is deliberately offensive to almost everyone. And that's one of the best things about it. And I'm a little bit shy to announce because of how it's going to be perceived on this mostly gaming channel. And this is kind of the point in my life that I have to accept that this channel has gone off the rails and I'm not a gamer anymore. Today, I want to talk about Dragula. Not Rob Zombie's Dracula, the Boulet Brothers' Dracula. This is the twist we were waiting for. This is terrifying. Welcome to hell. Wait, 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 wait. Don't bail just yet. If you watch the rest of this video, I promise you I'll prove that I'm not crazy. And I also wanted to mention that I'm not gay. Despite videos like this floating around in the community for a long time, I'm a pretty normal, boring, straight white guy, and there was a time I tried to be gay, but that's a story for a different time that's not really relevant to this. I just wanted to let you know that I'm not watching this for the gay element to it. It's actually got a lot more going on beyond that. Enough about me, let's go back to Dragula. It's basically an R-rated horror art show with a fear factor component. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite parts. It's got some comedy elements where they all talk trash to each other. And of course, it's LGBT themed drag, kind of like RuPaul's Drag Race, but not boring and more inclusive. We'll talk about that later. And the basic structure is the host of the show, the Boulay Brothers, issue a challenge to the competitors. Make the best blank vampire uh, reimagining of a classic uh, 50s horror, something kind of like that. And the competitors do their absolute best with some of them being amazing, like Hoso's other mother here. This basically blew my mind when I first watched this. And some others being very... <laughs> this is the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> I, just, I almost can't look at that one without laughing. So if you lose and do poorly, the losers have to do some often very extreme challenges in order to survive and stay in the show. A lot of it's like Fear Factor, but ramped way up. We're talking uh, skydiving, how many piercings can you get in an hour, who can get the worst tattoo, drinking blood, eating brains. There were a couple of times they put them out there, just made them fight each other. In season two, they put two drag queens in a Thunderdome and made them just beat each other half to death with, I guess, Battle Royale, winner take all, last man standing. I've never seen something so ludicrous and dangerous in my life. And then whoever loses that challenge gets murdered in their own short film. As a small spoiler for the show, instead of just be like, you have been eliminated, it lets them film their own murder scene. So they'll come back like a week later and get killed in some kind of way, like a slasher film. It's really fun. The final winner of this show, after everybody's been eliminated and they've picked a uh, new drag super monster is the title they have for it, gets $100,000. And most importantly, they get to headline the Dragula World Tour, you know, like a job. And this is the LGBT community and people doing drag. And I will just say from my experience watching the show, not a lot of these people are traditionally employed. A lot of them have a difficult time getting a job. So this is like a dream job. It's a massive prize and a big W for everybody. And that's the sh short summary of this show. The content level of it is unabashedly NC-17+. It's very adult, very mature, lots of spicy topics, lots of nudity, both male, female, and some other things in between that we'll talk about in just a moment. And it's unabashedly different from basically everything else on TV. As a matter of fact, in season two, they do a cold open with the Boulay brothers murdering TV executives because they've just decided they don't want to do traditional TV shows. The show is, and this is one of the benefits, I think, overtly political. They don't hide or pretend to be anything different than they are. They talk trash about a variety of politicians, about each other, about experiences in their life. It's really like a very YOLO free speech kind of thing. They have some opinions that many of you are going to find very, very spicy. So the question might be, what do I get from this? Since I'm not really into drag and I'm not part of that community, why am I watching this show? Well, I found it on Shudder just kind of randomly one day. I just let it play and about, after about 15 minutes, I was just sucked in and I couldn't stop watching because from Dragula, I get my horror fix. 
I get to enjoy avant-garde art in a way that I can understand. As an adult, I've determined that I actually really enjoy art. It's just not all of it and not the boring stuff in fashion shows. As a matter of fact, if fashion shows were one-tenth as much fun as this show, I might actually watch them. I get to see some people talk mad trash and burn each other. That's usually funny. That's usually the comedy part of the episode. They have a bit where they kind of go back and forth. I will say that I think season two or maybe three was like very toxic. They did too much of that and played it up and it got a little sad. And then probably my personal favorite part is I get to see some insane challenges, some really crazy stuff. And they're usually forced to do this in drag, like going skydiving in drag. Or I think this season they're going to have people getting waterboarded in drag, which is just... <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome and it's violent and torturous and I just I can't look away from that as a side note before we move to the last thing that I get out of this show the reason the hosts have people do these challenges is because the prize that they win is that they are going to be traveling around the world doing a performance art show in a and that is drag shows sometimes attract some negative attention in certain places that they don't want the stages, the lighting, the settings are all going to be different. People fall, they get hurt, things get wild. They're looking for a very tough performer. They're looking for a performer that can deal with challenges off the stage and on the stage. So that's why the challenges are so extreme. And then the final thing I get from this is I get to learn about a community that I know nothing about. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I knew exactly this much about drag before I started the show. Absolutely nothing. I think my only other experience with drag was when I was 12 years old, I, I sat down to watch RuPaul's Drag Race and was profoundly confused. And then my mother was very, very upset about it because it's a good Christian household, you know. So I don't know anything about this. And to be honest with you, I'm not super connected to the LGBT community. I have a few people like that in my family and I read and learn things, but sometimes it helps me learn more if I can view that through the lens of something else I'm already familiar with. In my case, uh, that's gonna be horror and some of these extreme challenges and stuff like that. So that part makes it appealing to me. And the gay part is actually a little bit appealing too because I can, it helps me understand other people. I get real insights into their lives. You know, the cast of the show, a lot of them do not have the support of their families. A lot of them have difficulty getting jobs. A number of them find it difficult to even get to perform on stage, no matter how hard they try. So there's perspectives there that I'm not used to. Then there's a few other things that I really like. This is a 100% independent production that operates outside of pretty much every studio, which we'll touch on in a little bit. Uh, it supports unknown artists. The vast majority of the people on this show are not famous. They're not super well-known. It gives them exposure. A number of them become much more well-known after the show. And even the ones that lose and don't get the super monster title and go on tour, a number of them have found jobs elsewhere as makeup artists, as VFX and special effects artists. They're just more exposure and jobs in their community. So it's somewhat wholesome in that regard in that it helps unknown artists and people that really could use some help get what they need and kind of get going with a proper career. I think it's interesting and as a small spoiler, the rules are somewhat flexible and for competitions that's usually bad, but in this case, uh, the host, the Boulay brothers, typically get flexible with the rules to give people who display extraordinary talent but perhaps have fumbled another chance to come back in and do well again. And then finally, the show is oddly inclusive for drag. So this is something that my sister explained to me that I knew exactly zero about before starting. But the only other thing that you're probably familiar with is RuPaul's Drag Race. And apparently that's not inclusive. It's like um, kind of gay men only. And RuPaul is known for popularizing some slur words that I will not repeat here on YouTube and get demonetized in order to keep people out of the community. Dragula welcomes all kinds. Uh, Dragula welcomes women, biological female drag, trans drag. They had a straight guy on season two that just loved doing drag. They had a drag king, which is a woman that typically dresses a very masculine man, so kind of the opposite of that, which not everybody allows. So it's kind of anybody that wants to do this can do this, and I think that's a good thing. All right, so I get it. It's still a weird look for a straight white guy like me to be recommending Dragula. So I decided to do a science experiment, and I showed this to J-Hub and Delta Change to get their opinions on the show. In case you don't believe me, I've roped J-Hub and Delta Change into watching a select episode of Dragula, and I just have to ask, 
Have you ever seen a drag show before? No. Have you ever heard of this show before you I got here? I know of RuPaul's Drag Race. That's about it. Okay, what about you? That's about the extent of my experience. Okay, are you a horror fan? Mm, it doesn't affect me. I love horror. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show this to new people and get their opinions, so hopefully I look less crazy, but I think the show slaps. 20 minutes later. <laughs> Okay, okay. We're all laughing because I think most of us had a pretty good time watching Dragula. I just showed these guys for the first time, and we'll start with J-Hub. What was your opinion of that show? It's fun with friends. It definitely is. It's over the top a bit much. It's good. Delta, what is your opinion of the show? If you want to have a good time with some buddies and laugh really hard and enjoy a drama, that's a fantastic show to do it with. So what do you think is the strongest part of the show? Uh, they're making fun of one another. Yeah, they're pretty savage, yeah. honestly. The roasts are real. What about you? Honestly, I love the costumes and makeup effects. I had some really impressive ones in episode one. I think I like that, but I like the extreme elimination challenges and the way that people just get murdered and that's the end of the episode is just <laughs> infinitely appealing to me. It's like every, every reality TV show, people should just get murdered when they get eliminated. It'd be so much better. Would you recommend this to a stranger? Uh, yeah, if you were going to watch it with friends by yourself, probably not. Okay, what about you? I agree with J-Hub. If you have a group of people to watch this with, it's a fantastic time. It's a fun one to, like, cheer at and, like, talk to the screen and, like, yell at, in my opinion. It's like going to see a shitty movie in theaters with your friend group. It's only fun because of the commentary. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, it adds a lot to it. All right, so that's these guys' opinions. Hold up, pause. At this point, I want to do a quick editor's note here to point out J-Hub's seeming lack of enthusiasm this man hates almost everything. When we reviewed food products and stuff together, his scores on things are like two standard deviations below. So the fact that he can sit there calmly and say, yeah, it's good, watch it with friends, is insane because his normal reaction is like, yeah, bro, it's trash, don't watch it, garbage, worst thing ever, blah, blah, blah. So that's actually a pretty good endorsement. So if you've made it this far into the video, you're probably considering watching the show. I'll say it is a Shudder exclusive right now. I think you can find some episodes on YouTube if you search for them and of course the Pirate Bay. But this is like really, really independent film to the point where it's actually stealing to pirate. I don't feel bad about pirating Disney stuff. I really don't, but I'd feel bad about pirating this. My recommendation would be to start with season four. It's the newest, they've kind of really found their groove. It's probably the best overall. I will say though, season four, for some bizarre reason, opens with a nearly 15 minute short film or two short films bookended together. And it just goes on and on and on and on forever. And this almost made me dip out early, but if you can fast forward or skip through that part to where the actual show begins, way better. Season three is also a really good start. Uh, season three is uh, probably one of the more wholesome ones. And then I will mention seasons one and two are so low budget, they look like found footage horror films, okay? Season one, the prize was whatever people donated on Kickstarter. Season one premiered on a literal YouTube channel of all things. Like it was filmed on like Canon Cybershot little cameras. It looks like a high-end YouTube video for a lot of it. Season two gets better because it got picked up by Canadian Out TV. The budget is still very tiny. You can see it sometimes. <laughs> Actually, you can see it a number of times. And because of that, seasons one and two don't have the same quality standard as the others, but they do have an element of like really raw realness to them. And I will say the challenges that they do in those seasons are way less safe and probably way less insured. So they're still fun to watch. And guys, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. By all means, check out Dragula. It's quite fun. And happy Halloween.